let's start with the stick on the ground. Now the stick on the ground here is at a four o'clock position. And this is to reference where my shaft's gonna go into the ball. Four o'clock, meaning 12 o'clock, from my point of view, is facing the ball. Three o'clock is towards the camera. And then that's on about four o'clock, right? So if I normally am someone who come down and I get the shaft over the top and steep, again, if this is three o'clock down my toe line, my shaft kicks out over two o'clock, one o'clock, hopefully not, you know, 12.30, but we're way out here. What I wanna do is have the club delivered to the ball over about this four o'clock position from here into the ball. And for me to do that, especially if I've come from the other side, requires some exaggeration. So what I really wanna feel is that part. I wanna feel the club working over four o'clock into the golf ball, but that's not really enough. I could put the stick on the ground, I could feel like I'm doing it, but unless I'm diligent with video, I don't know if I'm actually doing it or not. That's where the second part comes in here. I want to talk to you today about live view golf. Now you guys hear me say all the time that you need feedback when you're practicing. You need to know if you're actually doing what you're trying to do. And the best way to give yourself feedback ultimately is video. And not only is video the best way to give yourself feedback, but being able to see yourself simultaneously as you're doing a movement is the best form of video feedback. It's the best way I've seen to make changes in your swing and be able to correlate the differences between your feels and your reels. Live view is super easy to use and set up. Simply set it up behind or in front of you. You connect it with your iPad or phone, pop that on the ground. You can actually do your practice, see yourself as you're doing it, the best way to expedite your process. I encourage you guys to check out Live View Golf. We'll put a link in the description down below with a coupon code. Hey guys, Eric here out at the Bethlehem Golf Club. In today's video, we're going to talk about how to swing from the inside. Now, before we dive into the drills, we're just gonna quick hop over to Analyzer, show you what we're talking about, then we'll come right back. Okay, so let's take a look here at uh, what we mean by swinging from the inside. Now, I have the same players up here, Tiger and Rory, in the same angles as our four o'clock drill, as the messaging here is very similar um, to that. And really what we're looking at is a couple positions during the downswing and swinging the club head from inside to the ball. Uh, the first position being when they get to left arm parallel, like we talked in the four o'clock, having the lead arm uh, still in, right? Remember we referenced here and we referenced if the uh, toe line was three o'clock and the ball was 12 o'clock, that that lead arm would be in over about a four o'clock number, right? So this here would be the four o'clock. So having that arm in over that uh, four o'clock line would be a big part of um, beyond the having the depth during the backswing, a big part of being able to swing from the inside. So we'll just put this down the toe line. We have the line inside. And again, that having that arm still in some amount over four o'clock would be checkpoint number one. And then really what we see then is that the club head and shaft itself, uh, as we work from here through impact, will also go roughly over that four o'clock line or the club head here uh, which is pretty visible on both angles. Club heads inside or to the left of the hands. Club heads inside or to the left of the hands. Uh, one of the other checkpoints you would see would be the butt of the club pointed to the right of the golf ball or target. Butt of the club pointed to the right of the golf ball or target. So as we look here, we see uh, clearly the club head being inside or to the left of the hands. And that's really the checkpoint if I were to draw the line up the uh, golf ball through the hands from here. Having the club head, so golf ball hands, having the club head underneath that or from inside is really what we're uh, looking at in terms of the swing direction. So that club is going to gradually approach the golf ball from inside that plane, up the hands from inside that plane, um, up the hands. And that's the part that's going to get us the swing path and swing direction we want. So that's what we're looking for. The lead arm over four o'clock, the club over four o'clock. So if we hop right into the drill, what we have set up here, and we'll call this kind of the ultimate uh, little practice station behind us, is a station for me to have feedback to be able to learn how to get the club swinging into the ball from more inside. So we have two things here, right? I have my bucket with my stick through, which I'll talk you through how to set up in a second. And I have my stick on the ground. 
Now, some of you may have seen some recent videos we did. We did the four o'clock drill. We've done the best drill I've ever seen, and you've seen these things. Let's start with the stick on the ground. Now, the stick on the ground here is at a four o'clock position, and this is to reference where my shaft's gonna go into the ball. Four o'clock, meaning 12 o'clock, from my point of view, is facing the ball. Three o'clock is towards the camera, and then that's on about four o'clock, right? So if I normally am someone who come down and I get the shaft over the top and steep, again, if this is three o'clock down my tow line, my shaft kicks out over two o'clock, one o'clock, hopefully not, you know, 12.30, but we're way out here. What I wanna do is have the club delivered to the ball over about this four o'clock position from here into the ball. And for me to do that, especially if I've come from the other side, requires some exaggeration. So what I really wanna feel is that part. I wanna feel the club working over four o'clock into the golf ball, but that's not really enough. I could put the stick on the ground, I could feel like I'm doing it, but unless I'm diligent with video, I don't know if I'm actually doing it or not. That's where the second part comes in here. So the second part of this video, I've got a bucket with a stick. Now, how do we set this up? When I take my setup position, every time I set it up is exactly how I would measure it. I put the club right down my toe line, perfectly parallel to the ground. So from this, from this camera in front, that club's parallel to the ground. It's not below parallel, it's not above parallel, it's parallel to the ground, and it's right on my toe line. So if I were to pose my takeaway with the club right down my toe line, Notice I've got the top of the stick right over the shaft, and I give myself about an inch or two, depending upon how new or um, advanced I might be, about an inch or two. Now, this station, if it's set up properly like that, and I swing underneath it, there's no way I'm coming too far over the top or too steep. And that's the kind of feedback I ultimately want. I've got the stick angled through a, um, a basket here. You can use a range basket, you can put it in multiple spots, depends on the length, stick, etc. But the ultimate, what you're trying to set up is the stick right over the club when it's parallel to your ground, or parallel to the ground, right down your toe line, about an inch above it. Now, what I need to feel is I'm gonna start making some swings here. I need to feel the club, from my point of view, right parallel to the four o'clock, which for some of you is gonna feel way inside, underneath the stick and into the ball. And then I gradually have to get used to hitting shots with this. I need to start short. I need to start slow. I'm talking sandwich, 20% speed. If you haven't done this before, you might want to put a head cover, pull noodle on here. And when you're setting this up from face on, you want to make sure it's far enough away that I'm never going to hit that with my hands, right? So if I hit the, the stick or hit anything, it's always going to be my club here. So far enough away from me. And then when I start, again, I'm going to start short and build myself up. I want to feel the club over four underneath here. Now, there's going to be a couple things. Let's just do one little uh, rehearsal here. There's gonna be a couple things that are gonna help or hurt your cause when you're doing this that I see all the time. So I wanna make reference to this. Number one would be your setup, right? So if I wanna swing more from inside, the one thing I can't do is be too open with my stance. I mean, imagine I'm standing this way to the target. It's very hard for me to swing back and underneath this, right? So just from a basic setup position, square, or really I'd prefer even a little bit closed, a little bit of right foot, right hip, right shoulder pulled back would make this easier. During my back swing, the deeper I go, so I don't mean whip the club head inside, but I mean my hands working back as I'm turning, going down my toe line, through my pec, over my shoulder, so deeper this way. Imagine I make a back swing with no depth, that would look like this. That's gonna be very hard for me to get underneath there. If I make a back swing with some nice depth, that's a lot easier. And so those are two simple checkpoints I would put in if you struggle with this. Foot, hip, shoulder, a little bit farther back. Make sure I've got good enough depth and back swing turn. And then again, I'm feeling the club over four underneath the stick and starting short and building up. I'd recommend, you know, for the first week doing a sand wedge, 20% speed, gradually working up to 50. You might not hit a full speed shot with this station for weeks at a time. Um, but those are gonna be your sensations. So I, I would make sure my stance is good, foot, hip, shoulder, back, good depth, good turn on the backswing. It's okay if it goes a little bit inside during the backswing to start with. Let's go ahead and hit one from here. Now, as I'm hitting here, um, some other little pieces to keep in mind as you're going, if you've used to be too far over it. Most players I see that get too far over it also open their chest and shoulders too early. Right, I'd say 90% of the time someone's too far over it, their chest and shoulders are too open too early. 
And so you very, very likely want to watch that how to turn your shoulders video we did where you make sure you get a full 90 degree turn and then keep your chest and shoulders back just for the first little bit of your downswing. So they should still be 45 degrees closed at about halfway back. So what I mean is if I get some good depth up to the top, from the top to about left arm parallel, my chest and shoulders shouldn't open a ton yet. From that point, from left arm parallel, you can rip them open pretty darn fast, but if you open them too soon from the top, too far over the top. So again, right foot, right shoulder, right hip back a little, good depth, good turn, keep your chest pointed away from the target, keep your left arm in over the stick, club over the stick, back to the target just for a little bit, and hit more from inside. And if you do this and do this right, you should notice less divot, right? So you're more picking the ball off the turf. The ball should go higher, and then a little bit more of a push and hook tendency, right? This would be a nice draw station. So let's do one more with these. And again, the setup backswing, downswing piece I'm talking about is just for info. You don't have to think about all that, but those pieces can help. Right foot, right shoulder, right hip back a little, good depth on the way back here, back towards the target just for a little bit, club over four, into the ball and seeing what I need to feel in order to be able to do that. And again, all of those pieces for us should turn us more into a draw pattern. So this would be the station I'd start with. If you're someone who's steep over the top, haven't been able to fix it, this station will work. Uh, you have to be diligent with setting it up correctly, using a live view, using feedback behind you and have your success be like after a week, if you can do a three quarter sandwich at 50% speed, that'd be excellent. After a month, if you can do a seven iron, like 50, 60, 70% speed, that would be awesome. So hopefully you guys, uh, this makes sense. Hopefully this helps you. If you are Steve, if you guys have any questions, always leave a comment down below. Hey guys, thanks for watching today's video. If you did like the video, do us a favor, click that like button down below. Really helps us out, spread our videos to more people so we can keep making videos for you guys. Click that subscribe button if you haven't already. If you guys do like these YouTube style videos, we're gonna go ahead and put a card on the screen for a similar uh, style video to this one. If you do want online coaching, I would love to help coach you. We'll put the card on for CorgonoGolf.com. We'll also include the link down the description down below. Thanks for watching.